اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم چپٹر ٹو تھری دی کانفیڈریٹس ان دی نیم آف اللہ دی گریسیس دی مرسیفل او پروفیٹ فی اللہ اند دو نوٹ اوبی دی ان بلیورز اند دی ہپوکریٹ اللہ اس نالجیبل اند وائس اند فولو وات اس ریبیل تو یو فرم یو لارڈ اللہ اس فولی آوے اف وات یو دو And put your trust in Allah. Allah is enough as a trustee. Allah did not place two hearts inside any man's body, nor did He make your wives whom you equate with your mothers, your actual mothers. Nor did He make your adopted sons, your actual sons. These are your words coming out of your mouth. Allah speaks the truth and guides to the path. Call them after their fathers, that is more equitable with Allah. But if you do not know their fathers, then your brethren in faith, your brethren in faith and your friends. There is no blame on you if you are heir therein, but in what your hearts premeditates. Allah is forgiving and merciful. The Prophet is more caring of the believers than they are of themselves. And his wife are modest to them. And blood relatives are closer to one another in Allah's book than the believers or the immigrants. Though you should do good to your friends, that is inscribed in the book. Recall what we receive. Recall that we receive a pledge from the prophets and from you and from Noah and Abraham and Moses and Jesus, son of Mary. We receive from them a solemn pledge that we may ask the sincere about their sincerity. He has prepared for the disbelievers a painful punishment. O oh, you who believe, remember Allah's blessings upon you. When forces came against you, and we sent against them a wind, and forces you did not see, Allah is observant of what you do. When they came upon you from above you and from beneath you, and the eyes became this, and the heart stretched the root, and you have but doubts about Allah. There and then the believers were tested and were shaken most severely. Tafsir. Challenging times sometimes, he said. There and then the believers were tested and were shaken most severely. Fear is normal in human being. We understand it is dangerous, we understand it is not the best thing, but the more you believe in Allah, the less you will fear. When the hypocrites and those in whose hearts is sickness said, Allah and his messenger promise us nothing but illusions. And when a group of them said, O oh, people of your trip, you cannot make a stand, so retreat. And a faction of them asked the prophet to excuse them, saying, Our homes are exposed. Although they were not exposed, they only wanted to flee. So they are lying to basically flee from war. They, have, they want to have the forward and excuse. Had it been invaded from its sides and they were asked to descend, they will have done so with little hesitation. Although they had made a pledge to Allah in the past and they will not turn, that they will not turn their backs. A pledge to Allah is a responsibility. A pledge to Allah is a responsibility. Pledges are generally, you know, responsibility, but more so when it is a pledge to Allah. Because when you pledge as a leader, to the people, you have a responsibility to give it. When the people pledge to serve you, serve with you, for example, your guards and all whatnot, it's a responsibility. And the highest responsibility is the pledge to Allah that we will protect you as long as you are not abusive. Certain level of abuse, no protection. Verse 16. Say, Flight will not benefit you if you flee from death or killing. 
Even then you will be forgiven. Even then you will be given only brief enjoyment. Say, who is it who will seal you from Allah if he intends adversity for you or intends mercy for you? Besides Allah, they will find for themselves neither friend nor helper. So basically, as the saying goes, the best helper, take that. Take Allah as your helper and your friend. Depend on Allah than any other thing. That does not mean that you be mean to others, but it means that, you know, um, ultimately, you look at you know what is best what is intelligent what is truthful what is kind that is basically what is allah take that position demand your juice where need be and move on allah already knows the hinderers among you and those who say to their brethren come and join us rarely do they mobilize for battle rarely do they mobilize for battle being stingy towards you and when they fear and when fear approaches you see them staring at you their eyes rolling like someone fainting at death then when panic is over they whip you with sharp tongues they resent you any good this they have never believed this have never believed so allah has nullified their works a matter easy for Allah. They assume that the confederates had not withdrawn. But they were the confederates to advance. They will wish they were in the desert with the Bedouins inquiring about your news. And they were among you. They will have done little fighting. Imagine what happened. Over a thousand years, you know, literally on a world stage also something like this happened, confederate, confederation, federations and stuff like that, the United Nations and all of those things, you know, and sometimes people back off and some people don't understand why people back off, you know, and and that's why truth is the only thing that will last. And again, the war against spirituality is, uh, you can see it here if you have eyes. If you don't, you will never see it. You just say he's just on his marijuana again. Verse 21. You have an excellent example in the messenger of Allah. For anyone who seeks Allah on the last day and remembers Allah frequently, and when the believers saw the confederates, they said, This is what Allah and His Messenger have promised us, and Allah and His Messenger have told the truth. And it only increased them in faith and submission of the believers. Amen. Who are true to what they pray to Allah. Some of them have fulfilled their vows. And some are still waiting and never wavering. So here, it gives you sets of believers, different types of believers. Believers who have already did what they vow to do. Some who are still waiting. And basically all never wavering. So different levels. So that's why sometimes you just have to have that kind of uh, patience and understanding that just because those behind you maybe if you are on the forefront those behind you don't be too hard against them because some of them they may fulfill their vows later on verse 24 that Allah may reward the truthful for their truthfulness and punish the hypocrites if he wills or pardon them. Allah is forgiving and merciful. You see, again, the Quran is very, very, very amazing. You know, in the beginning of this chapter, it talks about disbelievers and hypocrites. In the middle of the chapter, I brought about things like marijuana and stuff like that in this verse chapter 24 it talks about punishing the hypocrites as well 
if he wills or pardon them Allah is forgiving merciful and sometimes when I say for example that uh, Adam Abbaro, Makisala and all one of these African countries they have been hypocritical on their marijuana laws I'm connecting directly with the Quran and I'm connecting with truth I'm connecting with everything that I say even those who are not you know believers in the Quran they can see the hypocrisy because you cannot have a law that tells you the citizens you know who drink alcohol the citizens who worship idols and stuff like that they are good you can leave them but the citizens who touches marijuana which is made by God and even those who are fighting it they have withdrawn like this verse has spoken about the confederate withdrawn and you still keep on continue you're risking a lot you don't understand you're being labeled hypocrites by the Quran and by me you know and God says though that it is for God that he may forgive them sometimes or he may punish them it depends so the, it depends on the type of hypocrisy not all hypocrites 100% will be in the bottom of hell even it says that to some things you know there are things that the people who are forgiving down the road sometimes here and there depending but it's very risky for anybody to risk anything with God you try to be as just as you can um, that's the best way you know you don't risk just like if you were to take an exam what you say it um, this question is not very very important let me just ignore it do something wrong you wouldn't do that you will try to your best to see that you know you get the most you want to get 100% on your test so the same thing in life when you are shown hypocrisy you avoid that hypocrisy you say it enough let's move away from this hypocrisy let's take truth verse 25 Allah repelled the disbelievers in their rage they gain no advantage Allah does spare the believers combat Allah is strong and mighty they have certainly spared me of a combat that I was definitely ready but I still thank God for sparing me certain combats they I uh, do not enjoy fighting with anybody I do not enjoy talking down on anyone as well trust me and he brought down from their stronghold those of the people of the book who backed them and he threw hero he threw terror into their hearts some of them you kill and others you took captive and he made you inherit their land and their homes and their possessions and a region you have never stepped on Allah has power over th all things you see God does not like war and stuff like that but if you force people to war there has to be a consequence if you start a war against us and you know you think that there wouldn't be no consequence they have to be consequence you have to pay for that war one way or the other so it's not good to start war avoid wars oh prophet say to your wives if you desire the life of this world and its finery then let me compensate you and release you kindly one of my favorite verse chapter 28 uh, I'm gonna give you one secret here in terms of understanding the Quran and interpreting the Quran. You see, interpretation of the Quran, sometimes you have to go and look what God advised the Prophet himself rather than just an option. So, for example, in chapter 2, there is an option on how to deal with your wives if they disobey you. The options given in chapter 2 is basically they are different levels you talk to them you separate from them in bed you beat them lightly and all whatnot and some people will focus only on that verse the debates the anti-muslim people they focus only on that verse especially the beating part and some of the believers also or the submitters they also focus too much on that part but those are nothing, those are listed things, there can be like options, you have to choose just one, or they can be levels that you have to go through. But more important is look at what this verse 
recommended to Muhammad. So this verse is higher than that verse in my opinion. He said, Oh Muhammad, say to your wives, if you desire the life of this world and its finery, then let me compensate you and release you kindly. So basically, it is recommending the best of the best rather than beat them and all what not. Talk to them strongly. Tell them, well, if you do not love me again, you do want to follow whatever you want to follow, then here is it. I'm going to give you even some money and you go. We separate. You know. Don't ask me why I am still single. I believe very much in this verse. So, verse 29. But if you desire Allah, his messenger, and the home of the hereafter, then Allah has prepared for the righteous among you a magnificent compensation. See, he's telling now to the, uh, the advice that God, uh, uh, Muhammad gave to the wives. He said, but if you desire Allah, not just me, if you desire Allah, meaning if you desire intelligence, truth and kindness, and me the messenger as a person, think of it as a relationship, and the home of the hereafter, that you know, this relationship is not just about this war. Then Allah has prepared for the righteous among you a magnificent compensation. So sometimes you are tested with somebody right here on earth and things doesn't go right. And sometimes they just want to get out because of money or some other things. And that's what this verse is trying to tell you. O oh, wives of the prophet, whoever among you commits a proven indecency, the punishment for her will be doubled, and that will be easy for Allah, because they are leaders. You cannot, um, the first lady and the ordinary ladies, they are not the same, <laughs> you know, we hold them higher standards, right? Verse 31, but whoever of you remains obedient to Allah and his messenger and act righteously, we will give her a double reward and we have prepared for her a generous provision. O oh, wives of the prophet, you are not like any other woman if you observe piety. So do not speak too softly, lest the sick at heart lust after you, but speak in an appropriate manner. And settle in your homes, and do not display yourselves as in the former days of ignorance. And perform the prayer, and give regular charity, and obey Allah and His Messenger. Allah desires to remove all impurity from you, O people of the household, and to purify you thoroughly. And remember what is recited in your homes of Allah's revelation and wisdom. Allah is kind and informed. Muslim men and Muslim women, believing men and believing women, obedient men and obedient women, truthful men and truthful women, peasant men and peasant women, humble men and humble women. Charitable men and charitable women, fasting men and fasting women, men who guard their chastity and women who guard, men who remember Allah frequently and women who remember Allah has prepared for them a pardon and an immense reward. One of the most beautiful verses in the Quran. Verse. 35. For the sexes, the misandrists, the misogynists, if you exist, this verse is an amazing verse. It tells you the different types of men, but you know, the characters, the, the list is very long, you know. And try to juxtapose this, for example, um, try to insert it inside well asri so you see here he said muslim men and muslim women believing men and believing women in well asri he said those who believe obedient men and obedient women that's a type of a good date 
And then he said, truthful men and truthful women thus escorting each other to truth. He said, peasant men and peasant women escorting each other to peasant. Humble men and humble women. Humility keeps you to be able to be patient, especially in a relationship. Charitable men and charitable women. You have to give something each other, one way or the other, even as a relationship inside the household, but also outside the household. Fasting men and fasting women. Different types of fasting, you know, including the very fast that we are in Ramadan right now. Who can, who can do it? Do it. If you cannot do it, God knows best. Do what you can do. Men who got their chastity and women who got. Um, so the getting of the chastity, it has so many different meanings, obviously, including, you know, your clothes and all whatnot. But the most important thing is their chastity. Um, men who remember Allah frequently and women who remember. Again, remembering Allah, including choice, not just Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, La ilaha illallah, and whatever you those are important but also when making choice remembering that god is there with you and he is the intelligent truthful and kind lord who will be able to help you he said for all those people who satisfy these things for them allah has prepared a pardon and an immense reward imagine if you did all of this maybe you may still have some rank and he said god says he has he has prepared a pardon he will still pardon them and give them an immense reward. We continue, verse 36. It is not for any believer, man or woman, when Allah and His Messenger have decided a matter to have liberty of choice in their decision. Whoever disobeys Allah and His Messengers gone fast astray. When you said to Him, whom Allah had blessed and you had favored, Keep your wife to yourself and fear Allah, but you hid within yourself what Allah was to reveal, and you feared the people, but it was Allah you were supposed to fear. Then when Zaid ended his relationship with her, we gave her to you in marriage, that there may be no restriction for believers regarding the wives of their adopted sons. When their relationship has ended, the command of Allah was fulfilled. Purpose of divorce, an example, a sign of purpose of separation and being able to marry adopted sons or adopted daughters. Verse 38. There is no blame on the Prophet regarding what Allah has ordained for him. Such is the pattern of Allah among those who pass before. The command of Allah is an absolute decree. Those who deliver the messages of Allah and fear Him and never fear anyone except Allah. Allah is sufficient as a reconer. Muhammad is not the father of any of you men, but he is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets, Allah is cognizant of everything. O oh, you who believe, remember Allah with frequent remembrance and glorify Him morning and evening. It is He who reaches out to you and His angels to bring you out of darkness into light, and He is the ever merciful towards the believers. Interesting verses, you know. Uh, there are so many other things that we can talk about, but. I am getting a little tired, so the tafsir has to be done a little faster. However, you can read through the lines, and I will try to do some other ones, like I said. Um, their greetings on the day they meet him is peace, and he has prepared for them a generous reward, O Prophet. We have sent you as a witness and a bearer of good news and a warner and a caller towards Allah by his leave and an illuminating beacon and give the believers the good news that for them is a great reward and do not obey the blasphemers and the hypocrites and ignore their insults and rely on Allah 
Allah is the sufficient protector. Again, you can see. Here it's also recommended again to ignore their insults. So insults is one of the things that God recommends we kind of have tolerance on. Because you can only run on two things, words and deeds. I'm not saying all words have to be, you know, tolerated. But if I am to tolerate, I am ready to tolerate words more than deeds. That's just life. So that's why it says ignore their insults and rely on Allah, rely on intelligence, truth and kindness. You can condemn their insult and still ignore it sometimes or just ignore it sometimes without even condemning it depending on who you're talking to because sometimes certain people they don't have even the intelligence of being able to understand certain things. But people like me most of the time I will tell you the truth and move on without you know worrying about your insults. You know, I said Allah is our sufficient protector, and Allah reveals chapter one asri to say it, escort each other to truth and kindness, and that's why I believe in escorting each other to truth. Oh, you who believe when you marry believing women, but then divorce them before you have touched them, there is no waiting period for you to observe in respect to them, but compensate them and release them in a graceful manner. Interesting. You marry a woman and divorce them before you touch them, you know, before you have intercourse. He said there is no waiting period for you to observe in respect to them, but compensate them and release them in a graceful manner. This is something, see, what I say, compensate them and release them in a graceful manner. God, this is why sometimes I accuse God of favoring women. <laughs> Compensate. Imagine somebody you, you are divorcing and he is telling you to compensate them. But there is wisdom to it. This compensation is out of your own will. It's just a little gift. It's gonna, if, the, if the woman was wrong, it's going to send a special message to the woman. That look at this man. He doesn't even mind to give this money and just get out of this marriage even. And release them in a graceful manner, not in a rude manner. So, you know, divorce don't need to be beaten and all what not. Obviously, if they fight, you have to fight back, especially people like me. If you fight, I'll fight back. But divorce not, not, and separations are not supposed to be in bitter and terrible manner. You enter mutually together. You separate mutually in peace if need be. But best is to try to be together and have patience for each other to the end of times oh prophet we have permitted to you your wife to whom you have given their dowries and those you already have as granted to you by Allah and the daughters of your paternal uncle and the daughters of your paternal aunts And the daughters of your paternal aunts who immigrated with you, and the believing woman who has offered herself to the prophet, if the prophet desires to marry her exclusively for you and not for the believers. We know what we have ordained for them regarding their wives and theirs, their right hand forces. This is to spare you any difficulty. Allah is forgiving, merciful. Again, you can see that um, there are some exceptions that was given to Muhammad sexually above the believers in terms of, you know, who to be with. Verse 51. You may defer any of them you wish and receive any of them you wish. Should you desire any of those you had deferred, there is no blame on you. There is more proper, this is more proper, so that they will be comforted and not be grieved and be content with what you have given each one of them. Allah knows what is within your heart. Allah knows what is within your heart. Allah is omniscient and clement. Verse 52. Beyond that, no other women are permissible for you, nor can you exchange them for other wives, even if you admire their beauty and accept 
those you already have Allah is watchful over all things so even with the exceptions given to Muhammad they are also limitations and he will probably know the limitations very much including other people's wife Muhammad don't have any right to take other people's wife peace be upon him verse 53 oh you who believe do not enter the homes of the prophet unless you are given permission to come for a meal and do not wait for its preparation and when you are invited go in and when you have eaten disperse without lingering for conversation this irritates the prophet and he sighs away from you but Allah does not sigh away from the truth and when you ask his wives for something ask them from behind a screen that is purer for you purer for your hearts and their hearts you must never offend the messenger of Allah nor must you ever marry his wives after him for that will be an enormity with Allah okay in this verse there is something that's very very interesting he said the messenger is shy but Allah does not sigh away from truth also he's trying to explain to you that you know you as a human being also try to be as close to Allah as possible sometimes you will be shy it's almost normal you know um, especially if there was something good somebody who was always you know being smart but you can always if it's your friend and you have to go somewhere you know they visited you but you have to do something just thank him be truthful and tell them you know I have to do this and this I'm sorry and they should be able to understand you know um, verse 54 whether you declare thing or hide it Allah is aware of all things there is no blame on them concerning their fathers or their sons or their brothers or their brothers sons or their sisters sons or their women or their female servants but they should remain conscious of Allah Allah is witness over all things Allah and his angels give blessings to the prophets O oh, you who believe call for blessings on him and greet him with a prayer of peace those who insult Allah and his messenger Allah has caused them in this life and in the hereafter and has prepared for them a demeaning punishment um, this chapter it's the same chapter chapter 56 where God is saying that Allah and his messenger give blessings to the prophet give blessings you know um, people sometimes interpret it as pray upon the prophets pray on and pray upon the prophets they are slightly different in real sense what that means really he prayed upon the prophets you know um, so it's not necessarily that the prophet is higher it's just saying what the verse is saying that all blessings even the believers God prayed upon us he give blessings upon us you know 58 verse 58 those who harm believing men and believing women for acts they did not commit bear the burden of perjury and a flagrant sin those who harm believing men and believing women both genders you can see again how amazing the Quran is sometimes when he explains certain things sometimes you just have to use your sense that it means both sometimes you they uh, is specifically stated for both believing men and believing women harming is not good but what kind of harm is he talking about all harms are terrible but here we can have a hint it said they bear the burden of perjury and a flagrant sin. May we never be that type of people. Oh, prophet, tell your wives and your daughters and the women of the believers to lengthen their garments. That is more proper. So they will be recognized and not harassed. Allah is forgiving and merciful. If the hypocrites and those with sickness in their hearts and the rumor mongers in the city do not desist, we will incite you against them. 
then they will not be your neighbors there except for us at why interesting he said if the hypocrites and those with sickness in their hearts so two group of people here and the room among us in the city those rumoring as well in the city if they do not desist we will incite you against them and they will not be able to be your neighbors there except for us at why Like I said the Quran is continuous. This happened over thousands of years, but what do you think in life what will happen? If there were hypocritical leaders and there were some people supporting them, let's say in government, and there were room among us in the city and stuff like that, he's saying that the righteous no matter what, sometimes God will incite the righteous against the hypocrites. He will incite them with words and sometimes he will incite them even up to level of actions. And the hypocrites they sometimes believe too much in their power. They believe that because of the power that they have, they will be able to win. But sometimes they don't understand that that will not happen. And he's saying that, you know, um, it will be for a while. That's why it is so important to remember peace as well whenever you are dealing with the truth it's not good to rush the war because if you rush the war god may test you with harder peace and you don't want harder peace you want easy peace you want to win easily win the hypocrites easily as easily as possible win the disbelievers as easily as possible win the polytheists as easily as possible verse 61 they are cause Wherever they are found, they should be captured and killed outright. You see, these are the verses that some people often misinterpret to mean that you know you have the right to go and do whatever you want to do to hypocrites and all whatnot. It depends on the type of hypocrites. If they are fighting against you, if they are not fighting against you, then. Personally, I don't see no reason why you should, you know, attack any hypocrite or attack any disbeliever. But if they fight against you, if they start a fight, tell them bring it on. Such has been Allah's precedent with those who pass away before. You will find no change in Allah's system. You see, it's repetitive. It's trying to tell you that what was will come again. The people ask you about the hour. See the knowledge they are of rest with Allah, but what do you know? Perhaps the hour is near. Perhaps the hour is near. I always say uh, the day of judgment is almost irrelevant. Almost say it as every day to you, and focus more on choice. The important thing is the choice. Think of it as it is near. That God can always help the righteous every day. So stay focused and try to be as righteous as you can. think of it every day as it can be any day Allah has caused the disbelievers and has prepared for them a place dwelling there in forever not finding a protector or savior the day when their faces are flipped when their faces are flipped into the fire they will see if only we had obeyed Allah and obeyed the messenger And they will say, Lord, we have obeyed our superiors and our dignitaries, but they let us away from the way. Amazing verse. Soldiers, tyrants, police. They will say, if they were doing wrong, Lord, we have obeyed our superiors and our dignitaries. Again, I like to give TRC the Gambia because it's my country. I want to build it as much as possible. You know, the excuse that they normally give, what is it? Obey our superiors and our dignitaries. But they led us away from the way. Those in the Gambia also with battle, some of them, they may say this, perhaps not in cruelty, physical cruelty, but they may say this. Because you're not supposed to don't obey your superior or your dignitaries in evil. Never. You know. Remember God all the time. Remember intelligence, truth, and kindness. Verse 
Lord, give them double the punishment and cause them with a great cause. O oh, you who believe, do not be like those who abuse Moses. But Allah cleared him of what they said. He was distinguished with Allah. O oh, you who believe, be conscious of Allah and speak in a straightforward manner. He will rectify your conduct for you and He will forgive you your sins. Whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has won a great victory. We offered the trust to the heavens and the earth and the mountains, but they refused to bear it and we are apprehensive of it. But the human being accepted it, he was unfair and ignorant. Leadership in general, you know. Here the verse is almost telling you that, you know, um, people take more than they are capable of taking sometimes in life, unfortunately. Some people will have children they cannot bear. Some people will have sick thrones that they cannot bear. You know, um, you want to be a president, but you know that you are not capable of being a president. Step down. But they may not sometimes. And he was unfair and ignorant. This is just a sign that, you know, because what matters is what we can learn here personally. What Adam did is what Adam did. That's his business with his loss. But with us, what can we learn? We see it every day people taking responsibilities that they cannot do. Um, sometimes they will lie to you and make certain people move from country to country when in reality um, they were lying. So that's why, you know, liars cost a lot of money to different people, waste a lot of time and all that, bring discord even against people. And that's why I am not of those who like lying. If you lie to me, in real life, most of the time you will find me your you'll be like, wow, <laughs> how couldn't he forgive this? You know, I hate lies. And I, because I just wonder most of the time, you know, what will it lead to? Obviously, I understand human beings and children and stuff like that. I am a little bit more tolerant. But the more I see that you are an adult of age, the more I will be intolerant to lies to you. Verse 73. Allah will punish the hypocrites, men and women, and the idolaters, men and women, and Allah will redeem the believers, men and women. Allah is ever forgiving, merciful. Amazing verse. Um, may the blessings of God be upon us. Charity from God. Anyway, uh, you can see the whole chapter here is the chapter that deals a lot with men and women is also the chapter that promises punishment for the hypocrites and the idol worshippers the men and women and he said they are hypocritical men and women some of you men think that there are no hypocritical women and some of you women think there are no hypocritical uh, men or whatever they was i don't know and the idol worshippers as well you know men and women so um, it's way beyond gender I mean, you, it's important for us to know that but the hypocrites they argue too much for this earthly world uh, they want to divide the world in the lines of gender in terms of men and women uh, the western world they do have some good stuff but they have, they have a lot of hypocrites also not just here in Africa but we also have our fair share sometimes alright may the blessings of it be upon us